So you think this is Hogwarts? Wrong! Hang on, surely this must be- No! I'm gonna show you exactly what Hogwarts is meant to look like by making it and by following the original map exactly. When the movie rights were first sold to Harry Potter and before the first movie was made, this was drawn as a map of Hogwarts. Surely you can't get more accurate than that, right? So with a little help from my trusty wand, we can whack this onto our foam foundation and get to work. So there are two massive points of interest on the map. The lake, which we'll save to last because of the resin pour, and the cliff, which we'll do first because it's kind of a center point. For something of this scale, you actually need some subtlety with some undulating terrain, which is where the heat gun comes in. All right, I've got my terrain and my cliff. Now I'm gonna do the castle on the cliff. Now, as it turns out, there is more than just the one drawing of Hogwarts itself. What's interesting is the general shape and structure of the castle is kind of the same. But as a result of those two sketches, I have a map of Hogwarts as exactly intended. So I'm gonna follow this to the letter and make Hogwarts as it's supposedly meant to be. So with the top-down layout sorted, it's just a matter of grabbing all of those shapes in tubes and foam and essentially blocking out those pieces. With the entire structure, shape, and texture of Hogwarts done, then it's on to painting. Come on. It's time to set that aside to drive and move on to another part of the castle that isn't technically part of the castle. It is taking all sorts of black magic to make this project possible, but not the Hogwarts kind, the video production black magic kind, who have sponsored this video and my studio. Now, normally I advocate against black magic, but in this case, I love it. Black magic design are the ultimate resource for video editors and content creators. The crazy part is not only is the production equipment the most affordable of its kind you'll ever find, but the video editing software is completely free. There are no strings attached. It's pure magic. Can we add a special effect in post when yeah. I, thank you. The best part is Blackmagic Design as a company is genuinely driven by inspiring and empowering creatives and their storytelling, like me and my studio, which is why I'm so proud and grateful that Blackmagic have partnered with me for this video and for so many previous videos and projects to make so much of my content possible and they can make your content possible too. A huge thank you to Blackmagic Design for supporting my studio. Links are in the description. Thank you, Blackmagic, and not the naughty kind. All right, next up, the Hogwarts front gates and the perimeter and fencing stuff at the same time. Now, this is described as having magnificent wrought iron gates, tall stone pillars on either side, and a winged boar on both pillars. And for the gates and all of the fences, this stuff is going to be magic. This is foam clay, and you can just shape it and texture it for the fencing all around the perimeters. Use some texture rolls to get that classic English stack stone look, and set those aside to cure, which I can put into place much later, once I've done a bunch more of the terrain. One of the key features of the gates is done. I have 3D printed tiny winged boars. There's a few of various sizes, so I've got a few options. I'm gonna start out by shaping those stone pillars, texturing them and adding the boars on top. All that's left is to build the wrought iron out of aluminium wire mesh. Now we're starting to get to some of the more intimate and outer details of the Hogwarts grounds, specifically Hagrid's cabin, which features prominently all throughout the entire series. I'm gonna use the map to figure out where it is, and then I'm gonna have to scale it based on the castle. Now this is gonna be a pretty simple build. All of the descriptors I could find for Hagrid's cabin describe it as having windows with curtains. It's on the edge of the forest by a sloping lawn from the castle. It has a chimney and it's one room. So the shape's not gonna be complex, but at the same time, it's a feature and it's gonna be recognizable and it's gonna stand out. Up next is our little station for Hogwarts. And I can say it's little because the descriptor is single tiny platform. So little station. 
I find the positioning of the station in the grand scheme of this whole layout really weird because there is a whole town on the exact opposite side of the Hogwarts grounds, which realistically is where I think the station should be. But all I have to do is follow the damn instruction, which is make a little tiny platform that the Hogwarts Express can choo-choo into. And our first years can clamber onto their boats and the rest of the students can jump in their carriages. All right, next up, Hogsmeade, which is described as little thatched cottages and shops. So I think this is about the most realistic scale comparison to the castle and people that I can come up with. And on that basis, I just cut up a whole bunch of little foam blocks that would be all of my little cottages and shops. I did the roofs in foam clay that I could then roughly texture into something resembling thatch. And when all of that's set, it's just a matter of painting and dry brushing. Now you might be wondering why I haven't been putting the props down as I've been working on them. That's because I need to work on the terrain before anything goes in, which is what I'm doing next. And it's my favorite step, which I'm gonna to refer to fondly as the poop and sprinkles step. The poop is sculptor mold. I'm mixing up one smaller batch of earthier gray to go in the lake areas and some of the rockier places. And then a much larger batch of green, which will go under all of our lush grassy terrain. Let's get poopy. First poop, now sprinkles. Okay, cool. Set aside to dry, and then we come back now. <laughs> so now we can actually start working on the board, starting with the Quidditch bit. In map number one, the Quidditch pitch takes up a huge amount of this school grounds area. In the other map, it doesn't say where the stands are for viewing, so I'm gonna assume this whole border around the Quidditch pitch is where everyone can sit. So I'm gonna guess the Quidditch pitch is roughly that big. With the circumference of my pitch cut out, I cut up a whole bunch of tiny little wooden sticks that I glued to paper so I could wrap it around the stand. Other than the border of the pitch, the only thing specified in any of the maps is the change rooms on either side. And with my Quidditch arena fully constructed, it's time to cover it in some paint. I've done all the things. I've got Hogsmeade, I've got a Quidditch pitch. I got fences and I got a bloody castle. I shouldn't, I shouldn't throw stuff. I spent a lot of time on that. So now it's time for the satisfying bit where I put everything on and start to detail. Starting with the castle, which as you can see, well, it's a bit wobbly because I haven't really laid the foundation for it. So we're gonna have to cut out a bit of a foothold for it. <laughs> to do that, I just trace around the footprint of my castle in the direction it needs to face, cut out and carve out a foundation for it to sit onto, but make sure to also base it and cover up all that raw exposed foam with a bit of muddy texture. And now the most satisfying bit of all, piece by piece, the entirety of the school grounds is gonna to come together, starting with the fencing and the perimeter, and then onto all of the major props. With all of the main props in place, it gives me a huge amount of clarity to now follow the map to the T and get in all of those smaller details, paths and roads, huts and trees, and of course, forest. Now onto the two parts that are gonna bring everything together, the forest and the lake. Not just the forest, but all of the trees. We're gonna need a lot of trees. Fortunately, Amy spent about half a day making a huge amount of these tiny trees from the Woodland Scenics Forest Canopy Range. And now we can just flood our terrain with trees. But there is one very important tree. I certainly have I smooshed together an approximation of a Whomping Willow at this scale and I actually think it turned out pretty good. So before all the trees go in, the most important tree goes right about there. And for the rest of the trees, it was just a matter of poking holes and putting them in with glue one tree at a time until our hundreds of trees have found their home. The last thing is the lake, but I need a giant squid and I have like 15 minutes. I honestly think there might be a squid. Do we have a squid? Come on, Tom. Now, luckily, Amy's a hoarder. So we sort of hold on to almost everything. Ooh. 
an octopus. He's basically a squid. Giant squid. All right, I have a squid. It's just fluoro orange. We can fix that. Bit of hot glue and you live there. So I want this to be really deep feeling and to capture that, I sort of need to do a, a dark thin layer at the bottom and then do the blues and stuff on top. Problem is time. So we're gonna do the first one in UV resin. Mixing in a few drops of alcohol ink and mixing that up to make a nice dark UV resin that will only cover a couple of millimeters at the bottom of the lake. This will hopefully, underneath the main clearer bluer pore, give the sense of huge amount of depth at the bottom of this lock. This was more involved than you might expect, but the whole process, all the behind the scenes is actually available to my patrons. If you wanna support this channel, it's a massive help. So go check out my Patreon to get early Early access to all of my weekly videos and a weekly behind the scenes and of course appearance of the fancy scroll which you shall see in this epic final montage. This was a big one which is why I have big thanks to give to my new legend patrons Trev, Glitchcube and Heidi slash Tracy. Thank you and all of you for your support in making big projects like this possible. Hey guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this very ambitious video. Hit like or consider subscribing if you do. And if you enjoyed this, you're probably gonna enjoy my other videos. Check them out. And thanks so much for watching.